Today it's a joint project between Tubal Cain and his grandson Tubal Cain Jr. and we're going to make a simple steamboat it has no moving parts and here it is sardine can I put a little keel on mine that wasn't called for but I think it'll make it go straighter and all we do is uh, we have a, a loop of copper tubing and we'll put a little bit of a sterno underneath that and, uh, and light it put it in the water and it'll putt-putt along I think fairly well so I'll take you through that step by step along with Jordan this idea came to me uh, from my brother uh, Jan in Cody Wyoming and uh, he has the book entitled uh, Steam and Sterling Engines You Can Build Book 3 and in there is an article on how to do this little job and uh, there are no blueprints or anything it's just one or two pages of instructions and a few photographs and the the name of the article is uh, a steam engine with no moving parts by Roger Claude now if you go to villagepress.com you can find these books and many other books about machine shop and uh, steam engines and so on this book could probably be bought over eBay or some other place too but uh, there's some really good books there uh, at Village Press and I don't work for them or anything like that but uh, I'm just telling you it's a good website to look at the hull of the boat is nothing more than a sardine can so and you need to use King Oscar for best results and that's why I have named my boat Oscar for King Oscar however chicken of the sea or any other brand you know darn well work the same and these are 99 cents like at the dollar store should call it the 99 cent store but that was that's a buck and then I fed the uh, the sardines, I don't like sardines. I do like fish. I don't like sardines. Uh, I fed them to the raccoons. They were gone the next morning. I can't stand the smell of dead fish, so I filled this with gasoline, with plastic gloves on gasoline, and uh, you don't want to get that smell on you either. Then I dumped that out, and I threw this in a pail of soapy water overnight, and the next day it was smell-free. Didn't smell like gasoline either. Now here's how to make the copper loop, the steam generator or whatever you want to call it. This is eighth inch copper. And that's bought at Ace Hardware or any hob hobby store or hardware store with the, uh, where they sell the brass tubing and all of that. And it's about a dollar thirty for a piece of that. Now that's going to be hard copper. It will not bend. It will kink instantly when you attempt to bend it. So we need to anneal it. This piece has already been annealed and it's dead soft and I'll show you how to do that if you haven't already done it. Very simple. You need a source of heat and you can use your propane torch or your kitchen stove and I particularly like this long burner here. This, it's a GE stove but a griddle goes over there for uh, pancakes. But just take your copper and what you do uh, half of it at a time and I like to hold it right over the flame like this till it turns red, a dull red, and then run over to the kitchen sink and quench it and turn it around and do the other end. Just takes a couple minutes. Now it is very very soft. Okay Jordan watch this carefully. This is one inch dowel hardwood dowel held in the vise and we need about two and a half or three inches and it will take most of the 12 inch length of copper so if you just start at about that point and hold it with your hand and wrap it around no kinks and then I'll bend that down a little bit later on after I install it into the sardine can same thing on the other side and cut this off and it's easiest to cut it off either with a jeweler's saw a 32 tooth hacksaw blade or a little Dremel cutoff wheel but don't do it with a coarse uh, saw or it will uh, bend and mangle it Here's how I cut it off. I got a little black mark there already. Be sure and wear your face shield when you use your abrasive. And that can be filed and sanded so it's smooth. 
I've already labeled my name Tubalcane Jr. on the hall here, and I already oh, this one marked where I will be. Move it up in the camera right there. Puncturing. And he's got the holes pre then, pre marked just yeah. by holding it up there. And then I can, and, so I and can now put this I'm going to show you how to punch them. So. It's Tubal Cain Sr. talking right now. So I took uh, just a common drill gauge, and that's eighth inch tubing. So using uh, a tapered scriber, I put that into the eighth inch hole like that, and scribed it or marked it with a magic marker so we know how large to make the holes. You don't want to try to drill holes in that thin aluminum. We're going to punch them. I pre-punched these by putting them on scrap wood, and now I'm going to take the tapered punch and push it in there without piercing my skin up to the line. Right there. On both of them. Think you could have done that, Jordan? Probably. And now Jordan's going to try to put the tubing in there. Can you get him in there, Jordan? There we go. Perfect. Now we need a way to support this so that we can build a fire under it. And the first one we made, uh, the tubing was too close to the bottom of the hull and uh, the fire, the heat of the fire was really too high. So we're going to make a little uh, brass brace. That's right, Jordan. Cut that brass strip about a quarter inch wide with the yellow aviation snips. And don't cut yourself. All right. Now we're going to bend it and wrap it around the tubing. Good job, Jordan. Uh, he made himself a little brace here. Now what we're going to do is we'll take some epoxy and we'll epoxy that onto the hull because we can't solder that onto aluminum. And we could solder it on uh, to the copper, but there's no need. But So we're going to uh, hold that on there with epoxy, which will smoke off a little bit there. We don't care. And then we will seal the holes on the back with the uh, epoxy. Okay, Jordan. Go ahead and mix the epoxy. Reminds me of the dentist talking to the nurse. Go ahead and mix the amalgam, she used to say, before they put mercury and silver into my mouth as a child. Which hasn't made me crazy yet. Mix her up real good. He's going about 50-50 with that quick set ace epoxy. Don't use the slow setting or you won't get it done today. Okay, now Jordan's going to apply some epoxy to that little brace. I know his uh, chubby hands are in the way a little bit, but he's got some underneath that. And then uh, use it liberally around the top as well, and uh, where the tubing and the brass meet together. Okay, hold it up a little so they can see it, Jordan. He's going to apply epoxy on the inside of the hull and the outside. No moving parts. And this whole operation here is going to be done, you know, within about 15 minutes. And we're going to have to wait about 10 minutes for the epoxy to harden, not dry, to harden or set. And uh, then we're going to bend those tubings, uh, those tubes down just a little bit so they'll go into the water. And we're going to have a race on Lake Atlas, for which, of course, I expect Oscar to win. But uh, who knows? No, no, no. Tolkien Jr. is going to win. Who's going to win? Tobacan Jr. My <laughs> ship's going to win. And he, and he. You know, all these little uh, things that Jordan's doing here are, are minor skills, but all uh, put together at some point in your life are, uh, are, are quite an accomplishment, that you can do these different things and you know how to cut metal and, and drill holes and use epoxy and all the different things we're doing, measuring. Good job, Jordan. Thank Pretty you. well sealed around there and on the inside and we've got uh, glue epoxy here and down in here. That's pretty necessary. I tried making one without this and the, the entire uh, uh, tubing uh, assembly kind of just flops around so take the time to make that extra brace. True. I will see you in 10 minutes. We're going to run these steamboats on Lake Atlas and the reason I call it Lake Atlas is because uh, that's the chip pan from my Atlas lathe and I put it into service here. We've got water in there about a half inch or so and uh, that thing's about 30 inches long. Now before we can do this, uh, the whole principle here is that we'll have a little water in the coil 
and when we heat it it will turn to steam and it will spit the steam out one end and it'll draw a little bit more water into the other end but you have to pre-charge this with water so it's kind of hard to pour water into the tubing so what I do is I take a mouthful of water which I'm going to do right now and I'm going to squirt it in there with my lips Jordan is pre-charging his tubing with water over the sink as I told him. We're in the basement but trying to minimize the mess. Some of you people might be in apartments and the next thing we'll do then is we have to charge not charge, we have to fuel it. So I'm using Sterno any brand will do and uh, we put uh, a few dabs of it right under the coil not so much in the middle because the heat's going to rise between the coils. We want the, the coils themselves to get hot. So Jordan, go ahead and charge fuel yours up. This is a good short project for you uh, grandpas and dads uh, to do with your children. It'd be a good Cub Scout project too, but make sure you supervise uh, when we use the fuel and, and the fire. doesn't take a whole lot. And remember the epoxy is going to burn off on that one high spot that goes around the coil. You just about ready for the race, uh, Jordan, where I'm going to beat you? No, Tolkien Jr. is going to win. Alright, Jordan. Fire in a hole. Remember, people, you almost can't see this stuff burn, so it may be uh, lit and you don't realize it. It'll take a few seconds now. I had to add more water to Lake Atlas because the keel on, uh, on my Oscar boat was touching the bottom. Wait, maybe you should explain what a keel does, Grandpa. Some people may not know. Okay, a keel will hopefully make the boat to go straight instead of in circles. Grandpa, I can see your flame. Alright. Oh, Tupac King Jr. is taking off. So Oscar. Well, Oscar isn't moving. There, Oscar's moving now. Uh, Jordan put enough fuel in his uh, t t t to power the Titanic. So you know he he's, he's going to win. These are kind of like uh, Dodgem cars. Old Tubal Tubal Kane himself. Oh, look at Oscar going. But I've noticed that these boats seem to go. They surge. Yeah, get her off the... I tend to surge, but uh, kind of fun. Good idea to use a stick and not your hand because I got... Oh man, that was a burst of power. I don't think we're going to be able to have a proper race. Now notice that Jordan's turned a real sharp corner there and it's going in circles. He does not have a keel. That's because we and just that, made mine. That is the purpose of the keel. Uh, point Oscar the other way, would you? Okay. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, he almost had a crash. <laughs> I wanted to crash, man. Come on. Go. And that, folks, is how to make the simplest steamboat possible with no moving Remember, parts. You didn't mention the guy that gave you everything. Yes, I did. Uh, before you came. Oh. Jordan wanted to make sure I gave credit to the author of the article. Because it's awesome. Come on, let's have a crash. Have a crash. And that concludes our lesson on steam-powered boats and a, a With simple... With no moving parts! <laughs> we could use a little bit longer lake than Lake Atlas, but that's not going to happen here. Yeah, so. stick them out to Lake Evergreen. <laughs> we'll never see them again. Yeah, yeah, they would take off, wouldn't they? We would need them remote controlled. The keel does seem to be of some help, except I made too uh, deep of a keel and it hits the bottom of uh, Lake Atlas every once in a while, but there it goes. I did add a little more fuel to, uh, to Oscar. Yeah, he almost burned his hand off. Grandpa, All right. Uh, this is the last uh, 
steam video for a while because now it's summer. I hope you enjoyed this and be sure and watch my hundreds of other machine shop and engine videos. With me too. With Tubal Kane Jr. Say so long. See ya.